This conference will oh, no, now be recorded. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to call the meeting of the Hudson River Black River Regulating District Board to order. Today's meeting of the Hudson River Black River Regulating District is occurring virtually as well as here in the Sacagawea Field Office and our Hudson River Area Office in Albany, with one of our board members joining remotely and members of the public able to do so as well. The board meeting agenda is available at hrbrrd.newyork.gov under board meetings. We ask that you please close other programs on your computer or phone, silence your cell phone, and mute your audio when not speaking. The conference organizer will monitor the program's chat function for public comment. Comments may also be emailed to hrao at hrbrrd dot ny dot gov. Uh, we will begin by standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Roll call, Mr. Leslie. Uh, Mark Finkel. Here. Jeffrey Rosenthal. Here. Kenneth DeWitt. Here. Albert Hayes. Here. John Callahan. Here. Richard Bird. Here. Robert Leslie, here. Robert Fulton. Here. Tim Manicha. Here. Stephanie Rizicki. Here. John Hashin excused. All Excuse. present in the court. Thank you. Um, we need a motion to adopt the meeting agenda. There's no need to revise it. We need that motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second. Opposed? Um, I see no guests here. Is there anything going online? Mr. No Chair, who is the second? Ken DeWitt. Ken. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, Beth Moeller of Interactive Media Consulting is joining us and I'll introduce her uh, during my presentation. Okay. Uh, and since we have no um, other guests on that, then we have no uh, public comment, period. So I'd like to move on to approval of the September 9th, 2020 regular board meeting minutes. I'll second that motion. Any additions or corrections? Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Uh, we move on to uh, the report of our. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Leslie. I'm sorry. A, a motion and second. Uh, I can't discern Chair. who's moving and seconding because you all have masks moving. on. Moving, seconding. Mr. Moving this being Mr. DeWitt. Mr. DeWitt, Mr. Rosenthal? Yes, yes sir. Uh, why you. don't we make it easier for him? And when you do first, second, just give your name. Sure. You know, and perhaps perhaps raise your hand as well. Would that well, help? Okay. Yeah, that helps. Okay. Um, report of the executive director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, my report uh, appears on page six. I will just note uh, a couple of items. Uh, notably, our, our continued uh, response uh, in our reopening plan, phase four of our reopening plan for COVID-19. Uh, we continue to uh, work through some of the restrictions and nuances uh, necessitated by the pandemic. I want to, again, commend uh, the staff for the senior leadership uh, throughout and throughout the entire workforce here at uh, the way they've responded and uh, kept our important mission uh, going. Uh, in particular, I want to thank uh, Stephanie Rizicki, who's uh, had the, uh, uh, the, the uh, unenviable task of uh, coordinating the plan and, and uh, making sure everybody checks in um, in terms of their uh, self-screening, COVID-19 symptoms, self-screening every day. So great uh, team effort, and we continue to do the important work here in the regulating district. Uh, otherwise, you can, uh, Certainly um, uh, see the remainder of my report on page six and uh, the conclusion of, uh, of uh, 
this agenda item be open uh, to any questions. But I'd like to uh, now just uh, note the uh, significant process we've made, progress rather, we've made in, uh, in working with our consultant, Beth Moeller, who's here today, uh, on putting together our online uh, permit system capability, uh, building on the great work that uh, has been done here by the team in the past, uh, constructing the online database. And uh, this morning, I'd like Beth, uh, I'd like to introduce Beth, have her give a short presentation on where we are. I think I will even uh, uh, share my screen or have her be able to take over the screen uh, to give a, a presentation. Is that uh, correct, Beth? Yes. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for um, welcoming me to your meeting. I am going to share a screen with you that is what a user sees when they log in. Um, so where we are is we have a lot of the base information stored already. And that means when a person logs in, they can see their permit information. I'm not sure how much of the process that you're all familiar with. Basically, um, when a person, when the renewals go out this fall, they're going to have a secret code printed on the top of the renewal form. And people can then go to this online system. They can enter their permit number and the secret code from their permit renewal form, and they'll be able to set up an account. And with that account, they will be able to view information on their permit. They'll be able to request changes on their permit, and they will be able to pay their uh, renewal online. So all of that is in process. Um, there are a lot of nuances to your permit system. And to be perfectly honest, I'm glad I've been working with you guys for a few years so that when we got to building this, we were able to understand how many nuances there are um, and where we would go from where we go from point A to point B. What I want to show you is uh, this form right here, for example, you can look at your permit data. Now we have created test permits. We are doing all of this in a test database so that we've taken real permit data and we've moved it into um, different login URLs just for testing purposes. So when you see this, for example, here is a permit um, and it's got the information on it. it. You can look at all of the information on your permit. You can see your history, what you have paid over the past um, five years, basically and um, any insurance information, dates, renewal dates. Um, this permit, for example, was originally issued in 1999, but it was canceled in 2015, then reissued. So there are some things that we can see with that history. Unfortunately, prior to 2016, we don't have a lot of history. Um, a lot of the databases, uh, what was happening is the database was just being updated with new information. It was not storing historical data. So once we moved into this new system in 2000, 2017, we started storing historical data. Um, if you have more than one permit, for example, I've created a second one, um, I can go and look at the information on that second permit. So this one in this case was a commercial permit, um, as you can see, because the fees are much higher but we can tell what the base permit cost for this is, and this is based on the width of the property, and then the usage fee. And in this case, for this test permit that I've created, it is along the lines of they probably have boat slips, they've got gas pumps, they've got a lot of other things that cause, um, that would give you a usage fee of that size. Um, and again, same information, date history, and uh, if a person has requested work orders and we have that work order history in the database, that information would be included as well. Um, they will be able to request work orders as well from this point forward once the system is in place as well. So that's really it in a nutshell. The pay online piece is um, not functioning just yet, so I don't want to test it just yet. But we are working with Stephanie Rizicki, and you guys are using um, Elevon for your payment processing. I have a developer account set up with them and we've been running some back-end tests to make sure that we can communicate with it and we can get the data that we need. We have used Elevon in the past for other projects, so it's not anything different than we've ever done before. Uh, the last piece is able to update permit data. So you can go in and you can take a look at your permit again, primary holder in this case, you could add a new holder. Um, you can do when you do these things, you enter the information, and we're still cleaning up the interface a little bit, but you can enter the information and it 
request changes. Because what this does is it sends a note to the field office and says, this person has requested to add a holder, remove a holder, whatever kind of change they want to make. And it goes to the field office because some of these changes do incur fee costs. For example, if you're adding a holder, there's going to be a sign fee change. There's going to be a fee for a new sign. Um, so those are the kinds of things where we don't want people to just automatically do this, where we will eventually phase that in where, okay, you're changing the name that's going to incur us a change to the, that's going to incur a fee. So we want to make sure. Pause? I have, sure. for a question. I have a question Absolutely. on that. I have a question directed to staff. You can't just decide you're going to add someone to your permit. So well, I assume it has to be I'll tell, I'll tell. verified that it's now a new deed holder or someone that has the right so to so be a permit holder. So the Stephanie is nodding her head. I assume there's some closing the loop. Now, there is a closing okay. room, and that's we've established also a permits at hrbrd.ny.gov okay. email address. Um, you can add any 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 uh, permit E can add up to is it up to five special people people total? There is a limit on telling how many the database would hold. But sure. Internally, they could if it was eight siblings, they could all yeah. be on it. But sure. again, it's all feed driven. So we, we, yeah, it's not because I have a bunch of friends that I want to put them on my permit. Correct. For, that's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, there are a bunch of those I'd like. To, I mean, reportedly, <laughs> 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 there will be one. The, the primary permit Thank holder you. will be designated as the uh, person okay. who can manage this online system. Perfect. So there is. For instance, if, if you if you wanted to, Beth, you'll correct me if I'm getting this wrong. If you signed up for an online account and you're signing up with an email address which is different than the email address we have on file, the system has on file for the primary permit holder, that will also trigger one of these emails that we can verify gotcha. that that's, that's going to be the primary person responsible for managing the account. That is correct. It is automatically going to trigger an email to the primary permit holder. It's actually going, any change requests are going to trigger um, emails to any of the email addresses we have on file for that permit. So if there are four different holders on the permit and you want to add a fifth, for example, that change request is going to trigger an email to those people saying that the account holder has requested a change to the permit. Uh, we understand we've been talking to the people in the field office and we understand that in some instances it's just a normal change request. In some instances you have family dynamics that um, they have to work around and work through. So what we're trying to do is none of the, if you request a change, and that's why it's called request a change, it does not make the change. It requests the change, it goes to the field office, they will follow through with it and make um, any, and they will determine whether that change can be approved and then it's approved and moved into the database. Right now, the data is just stored off to the side. And if the permit, if they decide that it is a valid change, then they can make that change in the database permanent. Now, does everybody have to have an email address? If, everybody, if you want to yeah. utilize the system. Yes, if you want to use the system, you do need an email address. We have a lot of email addresses on file. We do not have email addresses for everyone. But those are um, things that once this letter goes out, I think there's going to be a little bit of confusion in January. There's going to be um, a flurry of people updating their records with correct email addresses. Uh, we It also sends an email. So you have an email and your email address and file, you set up a really old AOL account, for example. And your permit is under your AOL account. But now you're using Gmail. So what's going to happen is you're going to sign up for an account with that Gmail address. It's going to try and send an email back to that AOL address as well, in addition to the Gmail address you have just given us to verify that you are a user. So I'm just, I'm just uh, you know, I'm, I'm just uh, afraid that a lot of people around the lake who are 90 some years old sure. are not going to have an email address, <laughs> nor are, are they going to know how to. So. We anticipate in a lot of situations like that, that it's most likely going to be a child or a grandchild who's going to be managing this permit online if they choose to do so. None of this says you have. And I'm sorry, Beth, and that may mirror what's going on now with the, with the mailing. So in, in many cases, some of those people are 
asking a, a younger relative perhaps to take care of that process for them. And this process will, will, will allow that to happen as well. Additionally, you do not have to use the online system. Paper renewals are still valid and paper renewals are something that you can do. What will happen is once you sign up for an online account and you use the online system, you're going to get an electronic renewal next year. Um, a year from now, you would get a, an electronic renewal because now it's you're using this online system and you're going to continue using that online system. You would not get a paper renewal. Is that correct, John? That's correct. Wow. And we, th and we think that over time, um, it is likely that the vast majority of our permit holders will transition to the online system due to, due to its convenience. You know, that remains to be seen. Obviously, we view this as a major uh, customer service improvement that we've been working toward for a long time. Okay. And, uh, and we're very, I, I know a lot of our permittees are very excited for it. We're, we're very excited. As 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 well as as Beth alluded to, uh, there's there's there, there is some apprehension about how this will go the first year. That this is not going to be entirely without pain, and uh, and I want to again thank not only Beth uh, but the whole uh, team that's been working on this project because uh, we've had some great feedback uh, from the internal end users here, which I think ultimately will make, make the product that much better. Wow, thank you, Beth. Yes, you can. Welcome. Any questions for Beth? Any other questions? Beth, thank you very much. It's very informative. And this is a long time coming and looks good so far. You're welcome. Thank you. We're enjoying the project. It's a lot of fun. I'm from the technologically challenged person in the room. It looks good so far. Thank you, Beth. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for the executive director? <clears throat> if not, we'll move um, on to uh, contracts and actions. Uh, we need, uh, need a resolution authorizing the uh, imposition of administrative policies. Mr. Callahan. Penalties. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sorry. Sorry. Yes, as, as uh, the board will recall in uh, September, it adopted a new fee schedule that will be in place for the uh, beginning in the 2021 season. That fee schedule did include a $100 penalty for a violation of uh, rules and regulations. Uh, however, uh, previously in its history, the board had uh, voted to not, uh, to no longer authorize uh, staff in a, to assess those penalties, favoring instead its remedy through the courts at the time. So what we what we need the board to do, what we ask the board to do, uh, in order for that particular component of the new fee schedule to be fully effective next year, is to adopt this resolution, which will again authorize staff to assess these penalties for violations. And we'll be happy to take any questions. From any the questions? Board. We have a motion to that effect. I will make that. I will make that motion, Board Member Rosenthal. And I will second that motion. And the way. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> no other contracts and actions. We move to uh, staff committee reports. Uh, General Counsel, Mr. Lesson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd note my participation in staff's effort to secure a valuation of the 56 feet of head and other end of term issues regarding the reservoir operating agreement at Conconville. Uh, I addressed uh, issues pertaining to conduct at the October meeting and would note uh, November will probably also be conducted online. Uh, handled various foil and encroachment appeal issues uh, and uh, received approval from state archives uh, for a series of record retention uh, retention schedules pertaining to litigation, subpoena logs, contracts, correspondence, et cetera. Uh, in the last uh, couple of weeks, that has come in. And we'll be spending time over the next several weeks uh, assessing the state of the records in uh, Mayfield 
essentially to uh, probably call out some of the documents that we no longer need to keep, which is uh, good news for us. Concludes Mr. Leslie's report, Mr. Chairman. Does that include your report? Uh, yes, that concludes the report. Any questions? Thank you very much. Uh, compliance officer, Mr. Zicki. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My report can be found on page 10. On pages 11 and 12, you will find the contact status sheets. They are included in the report and satisfy the public authority requirement. Two items I would like to point out in my report. The first being I performed the quarterly internal control compliance audit of the Hudson River area. General funds, receipts processing were reviewed. Proper internal controls are in place, including segregation of duty, and we are doing all of our proper accounting practices. The other item I'd like to point out is our MWBE utilization rate for the 2019-2020 fiscal year has been approved. Final reports were submitted and reviewed by ESD. And they confirmed that we achieved 58% for the year. Required percentage is 30%, so we were well above the required amount. I do want to point out, however, that due to the nature of the business businesses, our purchases vary from year to year and it fluctuates. For example, last year our, our total utilization was only 17.9%. So we did have a good year, but it does fluctuate. And um, we've tweaked our process for submitting our reports and we were able to exempt contracts such as construction where we know we'll get little utilization and that will help our numbers going forward. Good. Do you have any questions? Good. If not, that completes my report. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Chief Pisco Officer, Mr. Manuka. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The CFO report starts on page 14 of your packet. I mentioned in my summary that the district had filed all but two of its reports with the authority's budget office by the normal September 30th deadline. We also anticipated filing the remaining two, our independent audit and the ABO annual report by the time you called uh, today's board meeting to order. I'm happy to report that both of those reports were filed with the ABO last week. With your permission, I'd also like to share a couple of additional thoughts about the audited financial statements for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2020. First, you can find the audited financial statements on the reports page of the district website. Second, the audited financial statements would not be possible without substantial effort from many people. Certainly, the professionals at Galeros Robinson worked tirelessly to get this done. I'd also mention that. Uh, their fee came in uh, more than $5,000 less than we had budgeted. This represents the lowest amount for this particular service since the year 2014. Even more important uh, than all of that is the extraordinary effort and commitment demonstrated by uh, a couple of members of our finance staff, Anna Tracy and Kim Scott. Without them, none of this would be possible. I know you joined me in thanking Anna and Kim for their dedication to this very important task. <laughs> Finally, Nora Galeros of Galeros Robinson will review the audit uh, when the audit committee meets on November 10th. What she will describe in much more detail is an outcome for last fiscal year that is a little bit complicated due to implementation of GASB statement number 75, which established a new standard for accounting and reporting on other post employment benefits. Bottom line is that the district benefited from a change in federal law enacted in December 2019 that shows up as a one-time reduction in our OPEB expense. This reduction in OPEB expense helps offset the higher long-term liability the district is required to report for its commitment to providing health care to its retirees and dependents. So having sufficiently whet your appetite for the November 10th meeting, let me stop here and offer to answer any questions you may have about the district's finances. Any questions? Thank you. Good report. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Chief Engineer, Mr. Popan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My report begins on page 37. The month of September uh, was, uh, again, a little bit drier than normal. In our Hudson River area, we had about 80% of historic average precipitation. That led to 
the an inflow of around 20 percent of historic average in the Hudson River area at the Great Sacandaga Lake and Indian Lake reservoirs. And in the Black River area, we had about uh, 60% historic average precipitation and uh, Stillwater Reservoir received approximately 28% of historic average inflow. Okay. The watersheds are both still struggling even when we do have rain, uh, even when it seems like we have received a lot of rain, uh, still struggling to um, recover. And I think that's uh, reflected most notably in the fact that our inflow is fairly low at uh, all the reservoirs and in all the rivers, uh, even though occasionally we seem to uh, get a, a good shot of rain from a, a passing storm. Uh, as such, uh, Great Sockendaga Lake is about 4.7, at the end of September, about 4.7 feet below our target Indian Lake is about 1.3 feet below, and Stillwater Reservoir is about 3.9 feet below. Six Lake and Old Forge uh, continued throughout the month of September, uh, very close to our historic average and typical elevation toward the end of uh, the recreation season and boating season, uh, which we try to extend at least through Columbus Day weekend, and, and we were successful this year and not having to uh, to draw down any earlier. Uh, we are planning to begin the drawdown of the Fulton Chain of Lakes on Thursday, October 15th, and uh, it will be consistent with the rate of drawdown that we've had over the last 20 years. That concludes my report. I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have them. Very good. Uh, yeah, we need some rain. Any questions? If not, thank you for the report. You're welcome. Um, Harry Administrator, I guess, is excused. Is there? He's excused, Mr. Chairman. His uh, report appears uh, on pages 71 and 74, okay. and obviously he's been done. Okay. Um, any other board member questions or comments? Mr. Uh, Chairman, if I may, I'll just note as you move to the next uh, agenda item that we have been joined by another member of the public. So if you so chose, you could invite any public comment again uh, for him. Well, let's do that. Uh, Mr. Letterman. I can't read, so. It's Ray Letterman. <laughs> Mr. Letterman, uh, do you have anything that you'd like to add to the meeting? No, I, uh, I was just uh, <laughs> trying this out for the future. So thank you very much. Works very well. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the meeting. Uh, any other board member comments or questions? Uh, if not, uh, I need a resolution for our next board meeting, November 10th at SFO. I'll move that. Is there a second? I'll second. Who made the? Who moved it? I think it was uh, Mr. Dick. Okay. Rosenthal seconded. Mr. November. Mr. Rosenthal second. Mr. Bird, and then seconded by Mr. Rosenthal. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I need a resolution for adjournment. So moved. Second. Any? Uh, there shouldn't be no any comment. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank, thank you everybody for the meeting for coming. Thank you. Oh, I gotta go to